What's up with that beat you got out there? I'm Tamara Davis. I'm a director. I direct film, television, videos, whatever I can. I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker when I realized I wasn't an actress. I, I first thought I was going to be an actress, and then I, I worked with, I was like with a girlfriend who was an actress, and I realized like I'd rather be behind the camera than in front of the camera. But I think at the time there weren't that many females directing, so I, it was seemed like, is this even possible? What could be my first film project was a Super 8 movie I made. It was called Monk's Honor. And I made it, I was living above the Sunset Strip and my brother was really into punk rock, like, you know, Dead Kennedys, Circle Jerks, like all the like super punk rock scene, which was going on in LA at the time. But then during the day, they were like skateboarder, surfer looking guys that would hang out in Manhattan Beach and just look like kind of regular surfer skateboarders. So that was my first film, I made it, and it was just kind of visual, and I set it to, I filmed Black Flag in the early days, but it was kind of like, it just filmed these young, cute surfer boys, but then at night, they were like scary punk rockers. And so it was mostly just visual, but it, honestly, it was like some of the first early um, footage of uh, Black Flag with Henry Rollins. And um, I definitely remember filming on stage and in the pit, and there was something about like, when you put a camera in front of your face, you feel like safe. Like I could be looking at a train coming at me, but I had a camera in front of my face. So I'd be like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah, I made this little short called No Alternative Girls. And it was at this really pivotal point in my life. I was, I was on a movie called Bad Girls and then it all blew up in front. Like it just like became a disaster and I got taken off the movie. And I was like so sad because I thought like finally my career, I was like gonna be a director and I was on this big studio movie. But then they like took me off and they wouldn't even tell me why. So I was at home crying, thinking like I'm over, I'm not a director. And so I just was like, Hollywood can't tell me I'm not a director. And so I got this like opportunity to make this short film and I just picked up a camera and I just made a short film all by myself. You know, I filmed it all, I edited it all, I you know, did all the interviews and made like a little short. It was for the Red Hot organization, which I think was like a, something having to do with like an AIDS organization. But um, it just, for me at a time in my life, it gave me this feeling that like Hollywood can't tell me I'm a filmmaker. I'm the only one who can tell me I'm a filmmaker. I made that and then it was odd. Yeah, like two weeks later I was on, I replaced the director on Billy Madison. <laughs> When I started to do music videos, it was in the 90s, like maybe late 80s, but it was kind of like early 90s. It was just when music videos were starting to really pick up and everybody was talking about MTV. And I feel like in this strange way, they didn't, I came up with like this interesting style. I had made a video out with the Super 8 camera that I took from my film department from film school and I filmed it and then I got a meeting with the record company and I thought I was in trouble because I made a video without asking for permission and instead they were like, how did you do this? It looks so amazing. We're going to give you a bunch of money. Can you do this for this other band? And all of a sudden I was a music video director. And so really it had to do with, I kind of came up with a visual style that was unique and different. And then I was able, nobody cared that I was a girl, whatever I was. It was like, oh, she has a cool look. Can you make my band look like that? And I would do videos for super low budget. Like you can make a video for, I don't know, I made the tone look video for Wild Thing for $200. You know, so you can make a video for nothing. And then you could also make a video for like $100,000. It didn't really matter if you had a good band and a good concept and it, MTV would show it and you could, you know, I could be popular on MTV. I mean, I used to, when I thought in the early days, my own imprint, sometimes I would feel like it's because I don't have the money. Like everybody else like got the money to do what they really wanted to do. And I would get like 50% off or something. <laughs> So I feel like a lot of times my style came from, and they said, oh, your work is so edgy. And it's like, it's because I, I stood there myself and filmed it. You know, the edge came from, I just had to make do with what I had. And so it's not like I purposely tried to be edgy. It's that, that there was it, was, it just happened that way. You know, I had one take. That's the edge, you know. As a, as a woman, um, it's okay. It's like, 
I need to feel while I'm watching the scene that a tear might come out of my eye or that a laughter might like break the scene and all of a sudden I like ruined the take because I laughed too loud or you know that, that you're okay to show emotion and I feel that women are have like a wonderful they're connected in a sense to their emotions I feel that I have a good um, I have I can read people's faces well I think women are really good with that so I feel like there's a part of being a woman where you're in touch a little bit more with deeper emotions and um, we're not afraid to really push that and, and get deep with that. When I first started, there were so few women directors and now there's like, it's way more accepted. So you have to understand that, you know, Hollywood's been around for so long and most of my work and even now, like it's not that different in the crew that I'm really working with mostly men. You have to be able to communicate with men. So, you know, I'm a lot of times with like me and 15 other dudes. <laughs> so you have to be able to be okay communicating with men and it's different. Men have not had women tell them what to do at that stage for, you know, they're not so used to that. So it's trying to come up with a dialogue where they, you're, you're, you're able to communicate and they're able to listen to you and feel that they're part of the conversation as well and you include them in it. I've really noticed myself and the way I've directed in the past like 10 years, I really, um, I used to think like I needed to be like more like stronger or whatever and I really feel like that's not the way to go that sometimes the best way to get the best performance out of people is through um, kindness, listening, understanding, respect. You have to be versatile especially if you want to direct television or also if you want to be hired as a director and um, I think the only way to really make sure it's true to you is is that you still have to absolutely love it you can't do anything that you're not like you wouldn't be watching that show or you don't love that actor or you're not like this is i really i'm passionate about this and i love watching movies i love um you know i think that's so exciting like i remember i got to do gray's anatomy and i got to watch all the episodes of gray's anatomy and i'm like i'm working right now <laughs> and so i think like I really have a true passion for the projects that, that I do. They make me happy and, you know, to the point where you have to feel that way because choosing this life, it also means that you're away from a lot of the people that you love. It means that you can't be with your family a lot of times. You sacrifice a lot, but you, so you have to make it that if you're on set and you're there for 12 or 14 hours, when you look at the people around you, they also have to give you happiness and love. Like, it can't just be like, oh, I finished the film and I watched it and that made me happy. Like, every day has to make you happy. If I have an opportunity to sit on a set and I get to direct Daniel Radcliffe and Steve Buscemi in a scene and I like I'm sitting there just with the two of them and I can make a note and watch what these two guys do and like, that's, that moment is passion at that moment. Like, I love that moment. So it's not, it has to, it can't just be like I read the script and I loved it. You have to find a passion and a love for all those aspects. I think it's important to have more women's voices um, making films because first of all, we're 50% of the population. I don't know if we're 49 or 51, but we're, you know, we're equal people here um, it shouldn't it shouldn't only be one group of people that gets to create our culture create write the books make the movies things like that so I think that um, it's really important that our voices get heard and that we participate in telling these stories um, we're storytellers we're as human beings women's told stories from the very beginning we tell bedtime stories to our children we like storytelling that's unique to humans and it's what makes us human in a way so women should partake in that storytelling I have two boys you know I grew you know and when I tell my boys no they um, they don't listen to me that you could tell a boy no and they'll they won't do it but um, if you tell a little girl no, they're kind of gonna do it. They won't do it. They're like, they're all, okay, thank you. You know, they listen to you. So I feel like, don't listen to no. You know, like, like girls, like they, the only no you should listen to is your own no. That if you say no, then I, then that's respectful. But um, use that no that all the people tell you and make that give you power and strength to prove them wrong. And that's the thing that I had to show myself is is that 
if anybody told me no, it gave me strength to prove them wrong. And I don't feel like women should have to always push for that, but I just want to have girls know that um, people are always going to say no. That's It's so easy to say no because saying no means the conversation's over and I can go on back with my life. Saying yes means now we're engaged and we have that we have to work, whatever, it's, it's, it continues. Don't listen to no unless you say no, you know? But if Hollywood tells you no, 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 I don't know, still make films if you wanna make films. Don't let them tell you no, you know? Only, only let you tell yourself no. <laughs>